Hey, Fred Minnick here, and welcome to another Ascot episode in which uh, one of the judges of the Ascots, the American Spirits Council of Tasters, uh, tasted a couple products, and both of these did uh, quite well. So what coming up is a Cutwater barrel aged Drum uh, and a Ron and Mortal uh, Rum, and both of them uh, got trophies out of this. So the American Spirits Council of Tasters, this is our second year. These are tastings that happened last year in 2021, and we are currently taking entries for this year. So if you're a brand, this is you're going to get a sneak peek with how we taste. Uh, and our taster today is James Beard Award winner Martin Kate and a very good rum loving friend. Uh, please enjoy. He is an incredible taster. You will learn a lot from Martin. Cheers. These tastings were recorded and will be combined with the scores of other tasters. These are our judges. So yeah, this is typically what I would do evaluating spirits. Um, my name is Martin Kate. I uh, own several bars around the United States. Um, Smuggler's Cove in San Francisco is my uh, sort of mothership, but I'm also involved with bars in Portland, San Diego, um, Chicago, and Grand Rapids, and um, and as well as a couple others. And the um, when I do these tasting competitions, and I've done for several different organizations. Um, I have a kind of a ritual. I don't, you know, every, I've, everyone obviously has their own thing and does it their own way, of course. Um, I have a couple of my own preferences I like to do. Um, obviously, the um, obviously the uh, the rulings. I mean, the uh, the uh, scoring system is going to affect how I approach each one. Everyone does something a little bit differently. This one is not uncommon or too strange. So um, I've got five rums here that I'm doing from this one particular range in this category. And I've got them all in five Glen Cairns, which are off camera, I'm sorry, but here they are. Um, I do have, uh, I left my uh, sight glasses at the bar, so I'm just made some cardboard topper. So I've got them all covered because I don't want to sit and smell them all together. I want to keep them all isolated, of course, like that. So um, in this particular competition, I see that we've got points awarded for appearance. So I am going to take a look at it for just obvious signs of any kind of flocculation or any kind of cloudiness or haze, which I don't necessarily means that it's going to be, it may simply be a case of it not being overly filtered. It may have non-chill filtration. It may have developed a little flocculation from um, temperature change and something that's just going to come out if I could shake it up a little bit. So I do like to just look at it in the light, look for, you know, more uh, obvious problems like uh, bits of barrel, particulate matter, things like that, that I would actually, those I would really mark down for. Um, and then I like to look at it against a bright white piece of paper as well, give it a little bit of a tilt, take a look at the edge. I see it, look at the color shift as it gets a little thinner um, in volume to see if there's some uh, uh, change in color that's in, more indicative of uh, extensive barrel aging. This category is just as uh, just uh, aged rum. All we know is um, ABV on this. So uh, my next step is going to be an aromatics uh, analysis. In this case, what I like to do uh, with a Glencairn, and I do like to make sure that I've filled enough of the sample to reach the widest point of the uh, Glencairn glass, not too low because I want to have a lot of surface area right here to smell from. In these cases, what I do is I put my nose in pretty deep into the glass, but then I learned this a long time ago. I put my nose in deep, but then I actually breathe in through my mouth. And what that does is every time you breathe in with your mouth, you're still breathing in about 10% through your nose. Um, there's a, so you're basically auto, sort of auto restricting your, your, your smell your, because just going in deep and smelling it with your nose is, is too strong. It's too volatile and it kind of burns the nose. So I just come in and come in with the mouth just like that so and it, it, it to me I, I love this system I don't know how many other people use it but I find that it basically uh, really neatly sort of auto filters your uh, aromatic enjoyment so this is perfect this actually smells much oakier up front than the color initially gave me to believe but uh, this is really pretty there's a real charred oak on this one and 
a fair bit of spice. mostly cinnamon, a little nutmeg. So what I'm gonna do now is then my tradition for uh, my first taste is almost a, I, I, a just, I don't wanna, how do I put this? Um, I just rinse my mouth with it basically. And I don't think about it too much. I actually don't even really concentrate on my first taste. I just take it in. and then and then spit because i just want to <clears throat> precondition my mouth for this spirit by kind of i was like priming priming my palate for this particular rum in this case and if something from that first just quick taste pops immediately like almost if there's a really obvious distillation flaw or a really really prominent note of maybe something artificial or additive or something um it's something that just really strikes me, uh, especially maybe it's an extremely high ester level or something like that. Then I'll make note of it. Um, but otherwise, now is when I go back and give it a little bit more of a thoughtful tasting. And it's here that I'm thinking about the entry and the um and a little bit on the finish as a little bit falls down the back of the throat and see how it spreads across the tongue so this one has actually much less wood on much less wood across the palate than i would have been led to believe by the nose and a very uh, pronounced um a very pronounced uh, maple taste in the mid palate, which is making me slightly suspicious of a bit of an additive, but but the finish is dry, pleasant, a little bit of dusty oak, um, and enough kind of uh, elements of raw material, of a molasses raw material in that to be interesting and reasonably characterful so it's nice it's it's um not especially heavy bodied it's tastes uh um it's uh, there's no distillation flaws there's no obvious uh notes of uh heads or tails uh to an excessive degree or an unpalatable degree in the rum it's a little um it's a little medicinal on the finish a little um a, but not but not not a uh not an artificial tasting, but a kind of a minerally medicinality, I guess I would say on that with a, uh, with just a little bit of leather, but overall very nice. And then I might have some water and a, a plain, I have some plain crackers and I will soldier on after that. So that one didn't have a especially obvious nose, so I'm going to just give it a little extra swirl. Yeah, it's noticeably different. So this nose is very light. Nice, uh, a little sweet burnt sugar on the nose, but it's very faint. And a little, and a little stone fruit, actually like a unripe apricot, it's a little tart. So add a little water, a little cracker in between, then I'm just priming it again with a quick taste. And then uh, again, nothing, nothing obvious or glaring coming out from just a quick taste and then It drinks hotter than you'd expect at 40%. It's a real clean, it's a light-bodied spirit, but it's got a really, uh, 
Well, it's reasonably balanced, though, between raw material and oak without being, it is a little bit hot. I think it could do with a little bit more time um, on oak. But it's a nice quality, light body distillate. And the finish is uh, no off notes. There's a little bit of just starting to hint at a little stewed fruit on the finish, not too much, but not in an unpleasant way either. So, so weird. I've never talked through this, Fred. This is very odd. It's like you're, it's like you're being inside my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to tell you, but this isn't really happening. It's, it's just a dream. Are you just in here? <laughs> Who are you? Fred? Oh, um, <laughs> I'm gonna wake up. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna look down. I'm gonna have an ascot on and be like, "What? What happened? <laughs> What's <in> here?" <laughs> so, oh, I actually did forget to give that a little bit of white paper look. Nice. Some scoring. Mm. 